A person in my network just got an inquiry on their MVP creation website. They are a front-end developer and they haven't done so many software deals yet, so they asked me what I would do in their shoes. My name is Till Carlos and I help product owners get clarity on technical decisions. And today we're gonna to talk about the first steps agencies can take in order to sell a new project in software development. And this is the drawing that I made on this coaching call and we can go through the each step right now. So the first thing is inquiry on the website. This doesn't need to be on the website. It could be any kind of lead that comes in, any kind of first initial project description. This is so abstract that we don't go much into this. What they wanted to have is some kind of chat widget on a website that then communicates with some kind of backend and kind of figures out what this person was doing on the website. So I don't want to disclose more details here just to, to guard the privacy of that of that person. Think of any kind of MVP that roughly fits that criteria and it can range between two weeks de of development to 20 weeks. Okay, now the inquiry comes in here and the first thing we want to do is call that person. And let's say if we would meet someone at a networking event or it's if it's an intro of a friend, which often happens, then this would be the initial call where we maybe do some research, but it really depends on how much we know about this project. So if there is no information about it, then we can just have a quick call of 50 minutes and get the first information. If the inquiry on the website actually has more description, then we have some meat to work with. So the first call we want to do is the qualification call. And what we do here is we actually use the research. We need to know what they want to do, what the market the market that they're in, and then we want to prepare this whole call. So again, the, inf the input of this is the inquiry on the website or is some kind of description that you would get via an email. The things you want to research is other products out there. So usually what people build when they build software is that there's already something, some, some marketplace of these kind of software out there. So research what other projects are doing and then this would be perfect to us in this call what is your software doing differently? Another thing we want to test the prospective buyer is the, the user persona. So why are they doing that? And also what kind of reach do they have for the customer persona? So let's say you're working with uh, someone who wants to create a software for dentists. You would want to ask them, how can you reach the dentist? What is your position that you think you are able to sell to the dentists? Super important thing, but because in the end, if we're making a software project, we want to make sure that our client has success. So if someone doesn't have any kind of idea about the marketing and I've had prospective buyers like this, quite a few, they had no idea how they actually want to read the potential users of a software. This is usually a red flag. You want to work with people who are set up for success. Okay. And the third thing is the technical APIs or the environment. So in our case, this was like a chat widget. So we could do research into what does a chat widget need to have in order to work? Does it need to have any kind of important WebSocket connection, anything that is important to be real time? Do we have some AI or some kind of automation, some third party APIs that we need to tap into? Super important to prepare this because then we can also ask the, uh, the client how they're gonna deal with that and if they're aware of maybe additional cost of APIs and so on. So usually this just needs to be I think the preparation of this call, so the call itself is like maybe one hour, I can put this in here, one hour and the prep should, I mean, it could really, it really depends. I guess usually one hour is enough, but if it's a big fish, maybe you want to put in a day. Okay. So then the next thing we want to do after this call, we want to send to the client infrastructure blueprint. And now it really depends on the preparation that the client has done. I'm using client here, but we actually mean prospects because they haven't bought yet, but client is to be simple. So the infrastructure blueprint is, is that a document that they would benefit from? So infrastructure blueprint basically is something you can see this as slides on Google presentation, like a technical sketch of some sort, where you lay out the architecture of the thing you want to build. And it could also be just a Google doc. Usually it's, it's like that or, um, or a slideshow. But important is that you really plan this through. Like what kind of technology are you are using? What kind of load are you are you able to, to deal with? And I mean, those are all inputs that should come from this call. So we take a lot of notes, ideally. Okay, there was one question that he asked me, how can he record the call? Well, usually I always record these calls because it's super important to not, after that need to get back all the time to the client. So record the call in order to, you have and so that you have all the 
or the notes there and you can also take additional loads but usually it's it makes sense to really focus on the call focus on understanding and not being distracted by taking notes all the time okay so but basically from the qualification call all the notes that we're doing we're going into the infrastructure blueprint and this is something if the client doesn't have that it this is even possible to sell it to them because let's imagine there's someone who wants to build a software and the software actually will cost them 50 100 200 500 thousand dollars they're invested and if they run the software or they want to run their own SaaS business or something they know that this stuff is expensive so i would even if this is a good document that you can say okay this is how i do would do it let's say in my case with ruby on rails you could sell them that and give them credit later on for this work i mean not necessarily but it might be a good sales argument saying like if, if you buy this thing for like one thousand dollars then later on we would give you a credit for that so if, if he then chooses not to work with us they could just hire someone else and use that document but if they then work with us they would get a credit of let's say a thousand bucks let's say one one person one person day to work just to give more incentives that this is not wasted um, because of course someone who contracts a development agency would actually expect that this stuff is being done anyway but this is usually the, the idea is that the client really gets security that you can deal with that stuff and when you write this i mean this is not maybe not something that the client might know but it would be a great sales argument if you can let's say you would have projects in the past that are somewhat similar you can say okay this is a login and these are three other projects where we use the login so it will look roughly look like this here we use an admin interface where we have the users flowing through the system the kpis and so on this is another software that we did that roughly looks the same the more you add past projects and uh, the more the client will have security that this is actually going to happen the way he wants to of course you can also add testimonials but they should be ideally on your website anyway um, if you want to see our testimonials you can go to pairing.dev uh, there are a couple of testimonials here case studies so this is how we did it and we learned this from a sales coach previously who just gave us the whole flow and then i went went out and interviewed a bunch of old clients once you do the infrastructure blueprint you communicate with the client again and um, let's say this one uh, we didn't put a time on it but let's say this would probably take uh, i mean if you're writing fast let's say for two hours to five hours because maybe you want to do some research now the next thing is to do a breadboarding session the breadboarding session is something i need to explain a bit more and this is usually twofold so you would probably i mean you could do this together with them um, or you can do this on your own and then talk this through with the client it really depends breadboarding is a tech is a technique that you can use in order not to waste time on a ux or wireframe design so it roughly looks like this this is fabian fabian who introduced me to that but it's actually a concept of 37 signals let me quickly check so this is a breadboard from the old electrical engineering um also, this is what electrical engineers do in order to not make the box right now they just do the box later and focus on the actual wiring and breadboards look like this i mean this is a bit of a not like this so much there's um, i actually made a video about it so i got a couple of examples the way we do breadboards it looks like this yeah so we just use simple shapes and you would just define the user flow and you do this for every single user in the system and there is really no notation at one point i might make one but you just go ahead and uh, so for example this is a, an image of what i is actually in, on the plane this is where i wrote down breadboards for one project um and yeah then you go yeah so the, the way it, the way it is you, you can make them the wireframes later but i have a better option even which i'm going to show you so breadboarding there's a video on it there's a linkedin posts um you can check this out somewhere here on youtube this is my video on breadboards and i think i, I explain somewhat well enough how this actually works following so i have this. my title here and i use good the reason we use breadboards is that the time you put into this is very minimal and you get the maximum output out of that it should be minimal because the client has changes he they don't they don't want to have the exact same thing they want to change a couple of things they want to clarify and that way, if you have the specification minimal, the UI functional spec, if that's minimal, you can change it faster. 
So you do the breadboarding session and you can do this with him in like one or two sessions. You can do it alone one session and then show it to them. Um, but this could be anything from one to four hours. Usually for me to create breadboards, it's um, around one hour. You just do it on the iPad. And let me see, I have some uh, some example here. Yeah, so for example, this is a, an example of a, this is the Freeform app. You have it on the iPad and on the iPhone. But this is how we do breadboards. So all every everything that you see here with a with a red underline is one view of the software and really focus on the main use case here. I don't want to go into detail much, but this is something you can learn very fast and experiment with. So once you have the breadboards done and the client says, oh, this is good. Now what you could do is sell him the breadboarding session, um, sell him the actual result. You can say, okay, the session is for free. Let's we'll look at it. But if you want to have this document for some other reason, maybe they want to talk to another agency, um, you can, they can buy this from you. And I would sell this again for a thousand bucks. I think there is no threat of the client taking this stuff and leaving, going to someone else. If they see that you invested, that you understand what they need, then it's also, they, it, it also builds trust. And the clients usually, if they see that you're already doing good work, they just probably go with you. So I, there's no, I don't think there's a threat of someone leaving uh, and just taking the work that you did. So once that's done, the next thing you want to do is build a click prototype. The reason I added this here, because sometimes you don't, you don't necessarily need it, but it really depends how, how the client is invested. Let's say the client is not really exactly sure if they want this exact same thing, or maybe they just wanted to dabble a bit. Maybe they just want to show it to some prospect buyers and then say, do you really want this? This is, I think, the case here with the person who contacted me. But also, my the person contacting me, he was he's a front-end developer, so he could code this thing himself, and then he would someone else he get he would hire someone else later on in order to fill in the backend stuff, and so this is actually a very good solution for that person here. What I think is important in order to make this well is deploy it live. It doesn't need to be in production. Um, if it's on production, like if there's an actual website already. This would require the client to actually have made a contract, which is something you also need to deal with. I didn't include this here because it's a question of when do you actually have the contract? Uh, when do you want to make the contract? And what stage is that? But that's that's a different different question. I would deploy it in some kind of staging environment that the preview that the client would see that something is online, something that, that they can show off. Um, we have done this here. This is an actual project. It's an interview app This we're going to make later this year. And this is how it looks like. All this is lorem ipsum text and these are all auto-generated names. But this shows very well of what this software is actually going to feel like later on. And we only need, need front-end work for this. We don't need any kind of back-end stuff. Okay. Once the client accepts that, well, then is at, this is the latest stage where you actually need to make a contract with them or they at least prepay you for your work, but you need some kind of security that they're actually gonna pay. And then you're gonna code the MVP. Important for the MVP coding is that there are iterations, meaning every week, latest every two weeks, there's a demo. There's a demo meaning that the client sees that this thing makes progress. What we do, we usually send to clients every Friday and then just show them at least a small GIF of the new functionality or ideally just say here there's a login have a look at what if what you like if you like the, the next features important is that you get the acceptance so the client constantly needs to say okay this feature is good now this is good now this is good now if they don't do that i would stop developing and really have a discussion with them because if they don't accept the smaller parts they will never or they might have a problem of accepting the big thing in the end but once they do then the last payment is made and the MVP is online and then now they can try to sell this. And after that, hopefully there's ongoing work, meaning they contact you on a time and material basis. So then you need time tracking and then you're just gonna bill per, per hour or per day. So this is a rough overview. If you get more questions, comment below this YouTube video and let me know. We're gonna talk more about this, especially for product owners. And if there's, there's this other video about breadboarding, which you can check out here, which might make sense in your case.